Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and this is the biggest sharpening mistake a lot of woodworkers make. So you've read a bunch of articles, you've watched all the YouTube videos, you spent hours with your sandpaper, your water stones, or whatever you use, and you just can't figure out why your tools don't make those wispy, thin shavings that everyone else seems to be getting. The problem may be simple. Your tools aren't sharp. I know, you've spent a lot of time and they feel sharp. It may not be that you haven't spent enough time on the bevels or that you're not using fine enough grit. The problem could be that you're not paying proper attention to the back of the tool. Many woodworkers think that the shinier the bevel of the tool, the sharper it will be. But the bevel doesn't do the cutting. The cutting is done where the bevel meets the back. At that intersection where two planes come together, that's what matters. If you never pay attention to the back of your tool, you're only doing half the job. Does that mean you have to double your sharpening time, spending as much time on the back as you've been doing on the front? Nope, because a little time spent on the back will also reduce the amount of time you spend on the front. You won't be wearing away your bevels wondering why your tool is not sharp enough. Instead, you'll be doing your woodworking. First though, it's important to understand why the back must be flat. Remember, I said the cutting edge occurs right at the edge where the two planes meet. It's easy enough to understand with this little side profile drawing, but a chisel is a three-dimensional object. If you take a head-on view, the potential problems come into focus. If the back of the chisel has a concave or hollow surface, then parts of the edge will be sharp and in contact with the wood when you use it, but not other parts. Likewise, if the back is bellied or convex, then that portion of the edge will be able to cut wood, but the rest won't. So the back of the tool is just as important as the bevel. Tool makers have understood this for as long as there have been tools, and it used to affect the way they made them. When a piece of tool steel is heat treated, it almost always warps. One side ends up bellied and the other side hollow. In the old days, a western tool maker would wait to grind his bevel until after it was heat treated. Then he would take a look at that piece of steel, he would find the bellied side, and that is where he would grind his bevel so that the back side would be the hollow one. Japanese tool makers would take it a step further. They would intentionally forge a deep hollow in the back side of their chisels and hand plane irons. But wait a minute, if a hollow back is a bad thing, why would tool makers do it intentionally? Because they know the heat treating process is going to warp the tool. And the only way to get it flat again would be to grind it and polish it. In modern times, they've shifted that responsibility to you along with a little bit of cost savings. But if you're gonna save a few bucks by flattening the back yourself, you'd better hope that your manufacturer gave you one that has a hollow back instead of a bellied because the more belly there is on the back, the more steel has to be removed to get it flat. Now, let's look at a real world example. If you took a new chisel and you rub it on a stone, you'll quickly see what you're dealing with. The high parts of the steel will be shiny, the low parts will be dull, or vice versa, depending on how the light's hitting it. To get it flat, you're gonna have to wear away all those shiny areas until the dull areas come in contact with the stone too, and they become shiny. This can be a bit of a crapshoot with many tools. One chisel in a set may require just a little bit of work. It might be mostly flat right out of the package, while another tool in that exact same set may require a ton of work. The most difficult chisels are those that have a full bellied back. You know how hard it is to get rid of a belly. And with a tool, that means a lot of steel removal to get rid of what amounts to a hump in the center. Those cases are more common these days, sadly, because manufacturers are grinding their bevels before the heat treating process, when the steel is softer and easier for them to work. When they finally get around to heat treating it and it inevitably warps, well, now you got a 50% chance that that belly is going to end up on the back where you got to deal with it instead of on the front where it really doesn't matter. Only the finest chisels are flat enough for use right out of the package, even though most manufacturers do try to grind it flat a little bit. These Stanley Sweetheart chisels, which I really like, weren't flat when they were new. I had to do a fair amount of work to get them there. But you'll notice that I didn't flatten the entire back. You can even see the grinder marks left by the manufacturer on most of it. And where I did work it, they aren't perfectly smooth and shiny. It might look so on camera, but there's some scratches in there. This leads us to two important questions. First, does the back have to be perfectly shiny and polished like a mirror as well as flat? And second, how much of the back has to be flat? Let's start with the shiny part. 
The whole point of polishing is to remove the deep scratches that create a serrated edge. Because a serrated or toothy edge won't cut as well, it won't leave as fine a surface behind, and it won't last as long between sharpenings. It doesn't matter if those scratches are on the front beveled side or on the back. If they touch the edge where those two planes meet at the intersection, the effect's going to be the same. If those scratches are really shallow, really fine, then the effect's going to be minimal. It's fine. If one or two deep scratches are there, but not a ton of them, that's not a big deal either, as long as they aren't so deep that they're leaving grooves or ridges in your workpiece as you work the, with the tool. But a lot of deep scratches left behind by a coarse stone, that's a bad thing. There's a reason people shave with a razor and not a bread knife. How coarse is too coarse is the subject for another video, which we already made. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this one. My point is, your edge is only as fine as the coarsest of the two planes that make it up. If you get perfectly polished on your bevel, but you got tons of deep scratches on your back, well, you waste your time on your bevel. Now, if the important part of the edge is the point where the two planes meet, does the rest of the tool really matter? Do I have to flatten the entire back or just the part right next to the edge? Technically, you only have to flatten, sharpen, and polish the thin strip of steel on either side of that intersection, one on each plane. The rest of the back, or even the rest of the bevel for that matter, has no effect on sharpness. And that little tidbit of information is what makes the ruler trick possible. The ruler trick is a way to flatten the back of a hand plane iron in seconds instead of hours. I'm not sure if it was practiced much in the old timey days, but modern woodworkers credit David Charlesworth with its development. It's pretty simple. Instead of wearing down the entire back of this plane iron, which might have a great big belly on it, and so it could take ages to get it all flat, why not place a thin metal ruler on a stone and use it to lift the plane iron at a very slight angle so that the work is concentrated on the very edge where it counts. The effect is an almost imperceptible back bevel. It looks shiny to the eye, but it's actually a slight bevel, and that creates a new, perfectly flat plane, although a very narrow one, to intersect with the bevel on the front. It works. Try it. If you need a ruler, I'll link to a couple inexpensive ones in the notes below, but really anything about a 32nd of an inch thick will work just fine. There are two downsides to a ruler trick, though. First, you have to repeat it every time or two you sharpen your plain iron. As your edge dulls and rounds over, and then you go back to your stone or whatever and you sharpen it, you are slightly shortening the tool. It doesn't take much time before you've removed that fine back beveled portion, so you have to get your ruler back out and restore it. Really, you're flattening the back, but you're doing it incrementally one thin strip at a time every time or two you sharpen. And that ends up being a lot less tedious than sitting for an hour or more and flattening the entire back of a bellied or badly hollowed plain iron. The second downside to the ruler trick, and perhaps it's the most significant, is you cannot use it with chisels. Well, you can if you want. I do some of my chisels with back bevels because I don't want to flatten them, but that back bevel limits the functionality of the tool. I can still chop with it. I can even do some trimming if I hold it at an angle. But I can't do anything with my chisel that requires using the back as a reference, such as pairing one surface flush with another, or using a guide block to keep a, the chisel perpendicular when pairing dovetails. In cases like that, the back of the chisel may look like it's fully in contact with the wood, but that fine back bevel lifts the cutting edge slightly up, and it's not going to cut. Since many new woodworkers only have one set of chisels that they use for everything, then I'd say don't use the ruler trick at all. If you're going to use it, use it only on chisels that you're going to be chopping with, not ones that you're going to be pairing with. In those cases, you're just going to have to take the time to flatten it by hand. Do you have to flatten the whole thing, though? No. I try to hold it flat on the stone as I work it, but I'm only worrying about flattening the last inch, three quarters of an inch or so. That is the reference surface that you need, and that will give you all you need to have a nice sharp chisel. Of course, you can't make a tool flat if your sharpening surface isn't flat as well, and this is another cause of frustration for many woodworkers. You, if you rub a tool on a dished surface, your edge will come out shaped like that surface. 
So you're effectively giving your edge a hollow or a bellied shape. If you sharpen with sandpaper, then you're going to have to use some tempered glass or some granite or something you know is perfectly flat underneath it. If you use water stones, you have to maintain them regularly. A lot of people do it after every sharpening. They reflatten their stone. That's why for hand sharpening, I prefer to use diamond stones because they stay flat without maintenance. I like the trend stones because they make sure that the solid steel substrate, they're not laminated, is perfectly flat within a half a thousandth of an inch from end to end. That's twice as flat as the standards used by everybody else. We made a video about diamond stones a while back. I'll put a link to it in the notes below this video if you're interested. We also made another video about whatever sharpening medium you're using, sandpaper, stones, uh, paste, whatever, about the different grits that you should use and how sharp is just sharp enough. I'll link to that too. Just click on show more if you're on YouTube. Next time we do a sharpening video, we're going to talk about leather straps, an ancient sharpening tool that can give you big results. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com.